Yesterday when I was trying to work in the uh, workshop, my AC kept tripping the breaker and I couldn't figure out why because after all, it's on a dedicated 15 amp circuit. This is a portable air conditioner designed to run on a 15 amp circuit. At least that's what the box says. My kilowatt meter only showed it drawing about a thousand watts, but I think this thing's drawing a little bit more. Let's check it out and see why. So I've been getting a trip from my uh, AC in the workshop here on this breaker right there. This one's my bench power. This one's my air conditioner. Let's just see how much power we're drawing. Okay, um, it's drawing 15.4 amps. That's what the air conditioner draws when the compressor is running. You think that might be why the breaker trips? I got pretty good reason why the breaker trips when the air conditioner itself is drawing 15.4. The other stuff that's on there bump, bumps it up to 15.5 because there's nothing else really on that circuit. Um, I think my uh, it's a plug outside that's on there that's like my address sign or something or something ridiculous or no you know what it is it's my soffit lights they're not on during the day they are only on at night but they have a um, they have a photo cell and it draws just a little bit of power that would be on uh, probably this lead here yeah 0 0.1 <laughs> that's 0 0.06 that's what the photo cell draws just to keep it turned off during the day but yeah the uh, the big draw on this thing is the uh, the AC it's drawing 15.5 amps so that would explain why this breaker trips by comparison that's the home HVAC that's the compressor on 240 it draws 17 amps when it's running so yeah it costs a few bucks to run AC that's for sure and this one over here this would be the that's the blower motor which for the, the HVAC and when it's running in high which it is now because the air conditioning's on it draws 10 amps when the AC goes off I keep the fan running just for circulation it draws 8 so 8 amps drawing 24 hours a day to run my HVAC system just the blower fan all this stuff adds up and you wonder why my hydro bill is as high as it is we go through a lot of power at this place here's another circuit the only thing that's running on this circuit right now is two fans a ceiling fan and one of those tower fans which runs off of an AC adapter. Just a ceiling fan and a tower fan drawing 1.4 amps. And just for the hell of it, this is where my car normally plugs in. I will plug in my uh, electric heat in the garage which I use in the winter and we'll see how much power that thing draws. Yeah, 20 amps. But it's, when the car is running it's, uh, I think it's 15 or 14 not as much because it's only a 15 amp charger on the car the other cards also got a 15 amp charger now this is the same circuit that the AC is on in the garage I also have a fan on there I turned the fan on the only two things that are plugged into that circuit is the fan and the AC and you can see now it's drawing 16 amps so that would explain why the breaker trips it's a 15 amp breaker and we're passing 16 amps but it'll only pass it for a while and then it's going to trip. And now I turn the air swing on on that fan. Yes, it has a separate switch to turn on the air swing. And as you can see, now it's gone to 16.2. Turn the fan off and I'm back down at 15.7, which is just the AC unit itself. So I have those uh, portable ACs do draw a fair bit of power. This is why people that were putting them in apartments like the government was sending people free air conditioners they have been for a couple years and the people are putting them in, in their apartments and they're wondering why they're having breakers trip all the time well apartments typically don't just have one outlet dedicated to a breaker they typically run a bunch of things and they people would plug the air conditioners in and turn them on and they wonder why they kept tripping a fuse well there's a good reason why right there the portable air conditioner is drawing 15 amps over 15 amps off of a single circuit it's the only thing that's running on there right now is the AC. And of course, that's the AC I'm talking about. That one there in the workshop. It's plugged into that plug right there. The bottom of that the bottom of that plug is on a dedicated circuit. The top is on a different circuit. There's four outlets on this branch. This is the first stop. 
From there it goes over to the other side. Well, there's another plug like four feet away. This one here, it's got two things plugged in. One of them is my CRT monitor, which is plugged into the top side, which is a different circuit. The bottom side has got a wall warp that is just powering up my little AM transmitter for when I run that for testing, which as you can see is off. Next outlet on that circuit is this one. So this is the next, the third outlet. There's only four. The bottom one's got that fan plugged in, the one that I turned on where I pushed it up over 16 amps. And the top one has got this power bar plugged in, which is powering up monitors and scopes and stuff on my workbench. That powers up the big monitor here, which is of course off, and my scopes and so forth. And the old Hammond real power bar. You don't get any more real than this. Look at that. Real outlets. Made in Canada. Best power bar you'll ever find is this one right here. You'll never find one made like this today, ever. This is like 40 odd years old. And there's the fourth outlet on the two circuits. As you can see, my power bars to power up all the equipment for testing and so forth is plugged into the top. The bottom has the um, TV box, my, my cable TV box plugged into that and that's all that's on there. So I think what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to get a 20 amp breaker. I'll remove this morette and I will put the air conditioner just on it, dedicated 20 amp and I'll move this other 15 up to the last spare spot in this jungle of a distribution box and put the outdoor plug and the uh, soffit lights. They're not used for anything. I don't use anything outside. So it's a plug at the front of the house and nothing ever really gets plugged into it other than a, a address sign. Uh, or I think a camera. I think it's a camera plugged into that is what it is. It's a security camera plugged into it and that's about it. So the soffit lights and the uh, outdoor plug will go on their own breaker and I'll put a 20 amp one in here for this uh, this peg of an air conditioner that draws well 15 amps pretty much you can see that it fluctuates now it's down to 13 I wonder why see it was just 15 and now it's down to 13 must be doing something it must be running I think this air conditioner has got a it's got a pump in there as well that when the water starts to accumulate in the reservoir it uh, turns on a pump which sprays the water up onto the um, I guess it's the condenser or is it the evaporator? I forget which side's which. Anyway, the hot side. It sprays the water up onto the hot side to evaporate the condensation that's picked up out of the air. So I think the pump only runs when it gets over to a certain level, so that might be why the current was up. See, now it's down to 14 amps again, but it was over 15 there for a bit. Now it's back down, so, hmm. Anyway, it's pretty bloody humid here. It's, Humidity is about, I don't know, 80, 85 percent. So the air conditioners are pulling a lot of moisture out of the air. And uh, they're running pretty hard. They're up to 15 amps again. Anyway, that's what this thing draws. I guess it's time for a 20 amp breaker for this one because having it trip every 15 minutes or so is kind of annoying. And indeed, if we look at the thermal imaging camera, the only breakers that are warm are the ones that are got current being drawn through them. One of them is the this one down here which is the blower motor for the HVAC system. Even the other side is not warm, right? Because this is a 60 amp circuit. And the other one of course is this one here. This breaker is the one that's hot. And you can see the wire. That's the wire that's going to the air conditioner. It's a bit, well it's not super hot but it's certainly warmer than the environment that's for sure. But you can see it. If we look down at the neutrals, none of the neutrals are warm. Everything else is dead stone cold in here. Because this is a properly uh, wired, uh, properly balanced panel. There's no excessive loading in my place. Anyway, I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to go get a new breaker and just put a put a 20 on there just so that it doesn't keep tripping. I think we'll be okay. We're not drawing more than 15, so the wiring should handle it. A, it's a 12 gauge that's going to the uh, to those outlets, so I think we're, we're fine. Just the breaker is running just at its limit, 
and when it's a hot day like it is now, if I left this panel open like this it probably wouldn't trip, but when I close it up the heat builds up inside, plus the, uh, the this is against an outside wall, it's not really that hot yet. There's no insulation here between here and the outside wall, and um, it, it tends to heat up in the afternoon, this, will, this whole panel will get warm. So, um, because you know, there's insulation in the garage, there's insulation on the wall here, but there's none here. This is right against the outside of the, of the house, and the sun will be beaming down on here all afternoon, and that will heat this up. So this whole panel does get warm. Like even if I'm not drawing anything, this whole entire panel does tend to get a bit warm. So um, if I left it with the cover off like this, it would never trip. But with the cover on, just the heat build up on the breaker, and it trips. And of course, it's in between others as well, so the heat will build up between them all, and it just it goes into a thermal trip um, after it's been running for a while. So I think the solution is just to bump up the breaker to a 20, and that'll stop the uh, nuisance tripping.